going to be on you always. Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Hawaii Together on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. I'm Kaylee Akina, your host and the executive president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Delighted to be with you today. And we're talking about something that's on everyone's heart. Uh, and that is, how do you make a living in Hawaii? Uh, the cost of living is skyrocketing. Our residents are leaving. And there are ordinary folk that want to use their homes in order to rent out a room or two in order to make additional income. Uh, today, we have the privilege of talking with a couple, but uh, uh, who are doing this independently of each other, two individuals. However, their problem, as it is the case with many people who have short-term rentals, is that that business is in jeopardy on the island of Oahu and throughout the neighbor island. There's a bill that is in our county council now that could quash short-term rentals. I have with me today, and we'll introduce to them you the, uh, them to you in just a moment. Ed Jones and Peggy Oran, they're up on Oahu, uh, but we're going to talk about what the Honolulu County Council members are considering right now. It's a measure called Bill 41, and what that would do basically is limit short-term rentals on Oahu, no less than 180 days at a time. That's six months. That, that's a very long short-term rental, and, and finding. Uh, tenants for, for that period of time makes it quite difficult if you're simply trying to let your room out for a very short periods of time. Vacation rental owners Ed Jones and Peggy Oran say the bill, if enacted into law, would be devastating for Hawaii's rental agency, vacation rental agency, industry, excuse me. Now, imposing strict restrictions on short-term rentals may hurt Hawaii residents more than it actually will help. We're going to talk about both sides of the issue. But we're going to also discuss better policy approaches with Ed and Peggy that will benefit vacation rental owners on Oahu and all residents across the island. Uh, I do want to stress that today we've decided not to go with subject matter experts per se or with corporate representatives, but ordinary folk, people who have homes who want to rent out a room or two. And so I want to introduce to you today Ed and Peggy. Ed Jones, aloha, Ed. Thanks for joining us today. Aloha, glad to be here. Ed, where do you live? Um, over in Kalama Valley. And my responsibility is probably the simplest case. Um, it is just two uh, rental rooms under the unpermitted use um, that is allowed under Bill 89. Um, we can have up to two rooms with some requirements. Um, and Basically, we have been doing this for around 35 years. My goodness, so you really are a Kama'aina family. And I want to welcome Peggy to the program, Peggy Oran. Aloha. Uh, aloha to you, here. Peggy. Peggy, you're also, uh, where are you located, Peggy? I'm located in Hawaii Kai. Um, I have a four-bedroom home. It's been in the family for 50 years. And I have a small cottage behind the garage where I live. And I rent out the whole house or bedrooms. And I've been doing that for five years now. Before that, when I was working on the mainland, I rented it out uh, long term. But now I'm retired and I need the, the short term income to be able to live. Now, Peggy, when you say that you need the income in order to live, um, uh, you're not really uh, exaggerating, are you? I mean, um, what is no, the reality a... of that statement here in Hawaii? I have a small so social security check, but it wouldn't pay the taxes and the bills. So how much of a difference does it make that you can rent out some of your property? Well, I figure if, if I went with the long-term rental thing, long-term rental rates are a lot lower than short-term rental rates. Um, if I did, if I followed this bill, okay, and usually I can get people here for a week, um, if, if I followed the, the Bill 41, I could make uh, $7,000 in a year. Okay. Um, I can't do that. You know, I wouldn't be able to pay my taxes. I wouldn't be able to pay the, the, the expenses of running this house, and I'd have to sell it. So what you're talking about really is ma managing life here in Hawaii, being able That's to right. afford the high cost of living. That's right. Okay. Uh, um, Ed, 
when you're you're not a corporation or a big company or anything like that, you're just handling a private property. Um, what is your feeling about that? Uh, people talk about property rights, that owners should have the right to be able to rent out a room or two. What are your thoughts? Um, yes, the ability nine um, really struck a basic, um, this is our ordinance 1918, and this is what we're functioning on. It was passed in 2019, um, so just before COVID. And it provided the infrastructure so that we can operate legally. So we, we operate under the unpermitted use section and we comply with things like making sure we had the parking and the uh, room space and uh, access and place to enjoy outside and very uh, quiet and you know, quiet, call it cheer, cheerful piece of paradise. Well, you know, let's zoom ahead now from Bill 89 to the, this current bill being considered at the County Council, Bill number 41. Uh, Peggy, what, what is the situation with vacation rentals here on Oahu and the impact of Bill 41? Well, if, if we can only rent twice a year, which is what 180 days means, first of all, the, the, the city would not get a cent and transient accommodations taxes, the TAP tax. Um, I would have, I would file returns for zero, zero, zero month after month after month. Um, so they, I don't think they've considered that. <laughs> but if I can only rent to two tenants a year, I might as well just go to an all long term rental because I can't charge the uh, $500 a night that I get uh, for renting out those four bedrooms. I can sleep 10 people. You know, it's a bargain for them, really. And if I'm forced to do the, the two six-month leases, um, I might as well just say, well, <laughs> I'm just going to rent it long term. Um, and that would bring me probably seven to 8000 a month for that particular house, because it sleeps a lot of people. Uh, but that's still barely enough to pay the taxes and keep the place running and keep it well repaired and looking good from the street. Ed, would you have anything to add to give us some background on Bill 41 and the impact you think it would have? Um, yes, uh, it, Bill, Bill 41 is an effective ban on renting. Um, this kind of renting is month to month renting that we do here. Um, and it is under state law, um, a 30 day um, renewal uh, month to month renting so the tenant has the has the option to renew for the next month as most of them do um we've had tenants here from anywhere from just the one month to 10 years um so it is it provides them with a great deal of flexibility but the most important thing is this is an implementation of affordable housing and i hope that that will be considered as we as as 41 um, continues to um, continues to um, get more attention, and um, we consider the wide range of what we do. I hope that folks will, um, in the city council and in DPP, and in the proponent groups, um, will gather around the table and 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 talk about what we do and the benefit that it has for um, the community as a whole. Um, I, we believe that we're part of the solution here when it comes to affordable housing, not the problem. Um, no one is, I'm at a loss because no one has provided me with any kind of evidence at all that renting rooms has a negative impact on the community. Well, what do you say? Because it's, it's often cited by opponents to vacation rentals, short-term vacation rentals, that this uses up our valuable resources of housing and it increases the cost of housing and making it unaffordable to many of our locals. You said you've not seen the data on that. Uh, Ed, let, let me switch to Peggy. Do uh, you have any thoughts on that? Well, what do you say? We had that? a very interesting and rare opportunity during COVID when the governor shut down uh, vacation rentals for seven months. My house stood empty. Um, I lost $100,000 and had to sell my home near my grandchildren in California and move in behind the garage uh, to cope with it. Um, but 
It provided us on the upside with an opportunity to look at what happens with the market for potential affordable housing uh, when the number of houses on the market increases. And the, the number of houses that could be affordable rentals did increase. I had some friends that had to bail out and move to the mainland and shut down their businesses. Um, it did increase. And you would expect the prices to go down since the number of houses went up, right? Supply and demand. But that didn't happen. The prices went up. So I think that's very interesting. I think most affordable rental projects are um, feel good, look good things that politicians put on the table uh, to get elected. <laughs> and then once they get elected, they, they face reality and it gets too expensive. I think there have been more um, cancellations of affordable rentals in that department. And there have been people buying uh, houses that, that uh, are otherwise vacation rentals. Mine is not an affordable rental house anyway. Hmm. Well, thank you, Peggy. Ed, uh, further thoughts on, on, on what you'd say to people who argue that short-term vacation rentals really eat up our affordable housing and send the, the prices through the roof for locals? Um. Well, with this with this ban on affordable renting, the results would be that we would be down two rooms for two tenants. We wouldn't be allowed to rent to those tenants. Um, it is really unreasonable to ask someone to upfront 90 days or 180 days of rental payment. Um, that's not the affordable housing model. Um, in the case we use Airbnb as our platform, so um, um, folks easily go on to Airbnb and they just pay that one month up front. Um, there isn't even a security deposit because we know who they are. Uh, we can see the reviews. Uh, we don't need a security. Now, I understand that there's a, a further draft of Bill 41, the latest draft. Are you familiar with that? Does, does this latest draft in, increase the minimum days allowable to rent? Either of you? It, it, it does have a proposal for, so this is a draft. It does not mean that the base for, uh, 41 is dead. So our discussions are with each one that is being considered. So now we have at least two of them that are being considered right now. Um, the number of days is 90 instead of 180. It is still not compatible with a month to month renting model. So um, the number of dropping the number of days has been has not been helpful um, from 180 to 90 as a solution for affordable housing. If either of you could fix Bill 41 in any way, what would you do to it? What would you tell council members that they, they need to do? Um, the first thing I would ask them to do is um, to do appropriation. So there is, it, 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 the request is there for $1.3 million and a staff of seven. Um, we, I think we've talked about three of the four revenue streams that they can draw revenue from, um, TAT, GAT, um, real property tax, um, um, real estate investment, um, if, the next governor signs a bill for real estate investment. Um, those are all revenue streams for um, for enforcement, for uh, to subsidize affordable housing, um, to uh, you know to, to to make it possible for more people to um, find a place find a place to live. Peggy, would you add anything? Yes, uh, those are all great ideas, and I think part of the increase in whatever we have to pay to business should go to affordable an affordable housing fund so these projects that are proposed can be built um, right now that's not happening um, and I mean we're sort of a scapegoat a whipping boy for the for the, the uh, politicians in in Honolulu um, you know if there's a problem with affordable housing oh let's blame the vacation rentals uh, <laughs> if there's a problem with uh, noise in the neighborhood. Let's blame the vacation rentals. I have a situation in my neighborhood where I have 
noise from 4 a.m. to 1 a.m. I have drunks in the middle of the street in the middle of the night throwing trash in my yard. We have naked trespassers invading people's houses. Uh, the parking is so bad that rescue vehicles can't get down the street. Nine people died at this place in 2021. And no, Larry Bartley, it isn't a vacation rental. It's a beach park. And guess who put it in place? The city and county of Honolulu. Well, um, Peggy, uh, we're, we're going to segue from what you've just brought up uh, and take a break. And when we come back, um, right. I, I want to ask both of you about some of the concerns that members of the community express regarding short-term vacation rentals and, and how you would respond to that. But first, we're going to take a, a, a one-minute break. Uh, this is Kelee Akina on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network, Hawaii together with my guests today, Ed Jones and Peggy Lorund, uh, discussing short-term vacation rentals. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Two major crises have descended upon humanity, climate change and the coronavirus. They may seem independent of each other. In fact, they are very closely linked. The emergence of COVID-19 on top of climate change is a spiraling crisis and it's just the beginning. Pilot for 33 years and you have to have a nickname. I get to host on Think Tech Hawaii two shows, Figments, The Power of Imagination, and Figments on Reality. The Power of Imagination introduces you to some of my incredible friends and their life experiences, astronauts, war heroes, Hollywood writers, you name it, they're on it, and you'll be inspired and entertained. And on reality, I'll give you something hard to find, non-political commentary on today's events. That's right, non-political, because the vitriol doesn't help folks. So figments, the power of imagination, figments on reality, both on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back. This is Kaylee Akina. We're on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network, Hawaii Together. And my guests today are, are discussing a very important issue, and that is short term vacation rental. Just before we left, Ed Jones and Peggy Oren gave us some of their uh, experience and their concerns about Bill 41. Now, I've got a tough question for you. Uh, whenever we turn the news on, there's a, a segment if short term vacation rentals is being covered in which people are interviewed saying short-term vacation rentals are a blight on the land. They, they, they result in strangers coming into our neighborhoods. They result in noise, pollution, late into the night, partying. Uh, they re result in trash, overuse of utilities. I could go on and on. And I, I'm sure that you, you are confronted with this from time to time. Uh, I just want to hear what you you both have to say in, in response to that. We'll start with Peggy. Okay. Uh, of course, I hear all of that stuff. Um, the opponents of vacation rentals like to smear all of us with the same black brush, right? Um, however, most of us want to comply with whatever laws there are. Most of us are law-abiding people, and our aim is to make people happy. I try to make my guests happy. Try to keep my neighbors happy. I've had some neighbors for 35 years that have never lodged a complaint. Um, and you just, you, I'm not a, a super host or a premier partner on the websites I use to book guests because I refuse to do instant booking. Everybody who walks through my door has been vetted. I know they're not going to be a kegger for a week of noisy, shouting people. Uh, the, main, the people I have are good neighbors. They're going to be a credit to any neighborhood wherever they are. And I want them to be good neighbors while they're at my house. Uh, all of my parking is off street, and I make sure my people are quiet, and they observe the noise curfews. They know this up front. I tell them. I say, I don't want noise. And if you're not willing to be quiet, then go someplace else. I'd rather just have it said up front. And I think there are many, most of the vacation rental hosts on Oahu are just like me. I think the problems come from a very small group of people that are 
um, giving our opponents a field day as far as things to complain about. The rest of us, I don't think you'd even know my vacation rental is there. Thank you, Peggy. Ed, your thoughts? Um, to add to that now, for we're um, owner occupied situation. So it is really not hard to accomplish this goal in an owner occupied for rooms. Um, but I would point out that um, our tenants, uh, we're yet to rent to the first tourist in 35 years. Um, our, our tenants are from all walks of life, from the military, they're in nursing, um, they're small business owners themselves. Um, the, the tenant we have right now it is, is, is returning from last year to write the second half of her book. She needs a quiet place in paradise to do that. And this is where she can think clearly. Those are the kinds of requirements that we respond to. There is, there's a high degree of skill. Um, but in addition to that, what there, there has also been many, many um, rentals that have occurred with folks local with a regular job working in the community. I should talk a little bit about misbehavior though. Um, the ordinances we're talking about are ones that apply to all of us. So it is important to, when there is a complaint, to call H HPD um, and um, to support those that come here to uh, that carry a badge. In addition to that, I, you know, I, I'm understanding that for any of the other kinds of violations that are occurring, that are in DPP's jurisdiction, um, I believe that they should also follow a community policing model. In the latest draft, there is an extensive discussion on a binder of that we maintain information about the rental for the benefit of tenants and also DPP. Um, a, a regional DPP enforcement officer should be completely aware of the contents of that binder for all the properties in their region. And when that kind of dialogue occurs, um, I, th I think we'll, we'll see that complaint evap evaporate from the impact community. How about taxes? Do vacation rental home uh, owners uh, pay taxes for the visitors who come? Peggy, you wanna take that one? Yes, all right. Uh, there are three kinds of taxes that can be levied on a rental home. Uh, one is the general excise tax or get. They get it, we don't. Um, and the hat, that is the transient accommodations tax. If you're renting for less than that magical 180 days, that's the only place incidentally in state law where 180 days uh, comes into the law as it is written, right, Ed? You were talking about. That's, that's correct. I was referring to the, um, the Landlord-Tenant Code, which allows and defines the parameters on month-to-month -month renting. And that's where the long-term rental of 180 days starts. When I rented long-term last year in desperation, um, it was a long-term rental. So I, I had zero on my tax tax returns for about uh, a year, but I filed them. Anyway, you've got get, you've got tap, and you've got property taxes. So I pay my property taxes. They've just increased my assessment by 38%. Um, and I have cat taxes when I have short-term guests, and I have get taxes for all of them. Um, there's a question here about the difference between what hotels pay and what a vacation rental owner like me pays. The only difference is the value of the hotel for property tax purposes. Uh, they have a higher assessed rate. It's thirteen ninety per thousand dollars of valuation. Mine as a bed and breakfast home would be six fifty per thousand dollars of, of valuation. And I, I think they were revamping this code in the latest iteration of Bill 41. And I think the one thing they want to slip in there is classification J for bed and breakfast homes. You pay more money than you would for a residence. The lowest uh, fee for a residence is 350 per thousand. And that's for an owner occupied home with an exemption. 
So we, we all pay the taxes. It's just how much of one or the other. In what way, beyond the tax revenues that, that short-term vacation rentals generate, in what way do short-term vacation rentals help the community at large? What, what are some of the positive features of having this available? Uh, one, for example, being that it, it may not be only tourists who take advantage of them, but locals as well. That's right. Ed? Um, yeah, so I guess there's a couple categories of that. Um, there is more that we have to purchase to maintain um, a uh, vacation rental property. So there's a whole lot of vendors from pest control to, um, um, to a maintenance of the property. Um, I do some of that myself, but for the, uh, um, there is a lot that goes out to the um, local businesses in the community. Um, the other category there is uh, monies paid out by renters themselves. Um, every time they purchase a meal, um, Costco is probably pretty busy today and we have a record number of COVID cases, but we still have a considerable number of people in Costco who are residents here or at, in, and the variety of residents that are our tenants in, 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 in our short-term rental. Peggy, do you see any other advantages as well? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of tourists are, are vibrant, smart people, and they are interested in the culture here. And uh, I try to educate them as much as I can on that. Sometimes I take them places that they wouldn't have known of otherwise. The average visitor to Oahu spends $201 per day per guest. And I figured out the economic impact of my vacation rental on Oahu's economy for the last normal year we had, which was 2018. I spent $150,000 keeping the place running, and that's paying things to City Mill, where local people work, it's a local company, um, to the local food stores, um, all of my workmen, you know, day laborers, uh, yard men, the uh, pest control, the pool man, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They're all local people. Hico, Hawaiian Telcom, Board of Water Supply. All the people that work for those people are benefiting from that hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I paid fifty five thousand in taxes, all three kinds, and then there's the spending by my guests, and that adds up to for one little old lady's house six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. And you multiply me times 4,000, and you've got in excess of $2 billion a year. Well, Peggy, so wipe us out. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank both of you, Ed and Peggy, for being with us today. It, it was very insightful to, to learn from you, your experiences, and, and to get to know you. Thank you very, very much. And to our listeners and viewers, uh, we'll be back again on Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii Together. But keep in mind, Bill 41 and the short-term vacation rental ind industry, it's ordinary people. Take care. Aloha. Thank Aloha. You.